Hey everybody. Today we're doing some more linear modeling in R, this time tackling the situation where we have interaction between a categorical and a quantitative explainer. I'm going to start by loading up Tidyverse, of course, as well as the model data package. That's where the penguins data set is, which I'm going to use in this vid. I'm going to get access to that with data penguins. And then I'm going to do a quick filter on it to take out the daily penguins so that I've only got two species of penguins in this data set. Finally, I'm a little tired of the gray background in my ggplots, so I'm going to set my theme to minimal. Let's take a quick look at this data set with glimpse from the dplyr package. You can see that we have 192 observations of seven variables. Among them are body mass. That's going to be my response variable. I'd like to explain that using uh, flipper length and species. So flipper length being quantitative and species being categorical. It's good practice to start by plotting your data. So let's do that. Let's do a ggplot on this small penguins data set. On the x-axis, let's put our quantitative explanatory variable flipper length, mm. On the y-axis, let's put our response variable body mass, g. And let's color it according to our categorical variable, species. Since we want to scatter plot, it's geo and point. Let's just start with that. OK. So here we can see we have a generally linear relationship between these two quantitative variables within each of these two groups. So it seems reasonable to throw in some regression lines. So let's do geom smooth. Let R do this automatically. Method equals quote LM. And to keep things neater, let's do standard error bar equals false. Great. So here again, you can see a generally linear relationship within each of those two groups. Notice, however, that the slopes are different in this case, or at least they appear different at a glance, indicating that there's some interaction between the categorical variable species and the quantitative variable flipper length as we model body mass. In other words, if I know what species the penguin is, that helps me get some information about the rate of change of body mass as flipper length increases. So let's get a model that takes that into account. We'll use LM again. And as usual with LM, the response variable goes first. So body mass, G, tilde for explained by. And then we're going to put in the two variables that we want to use as explainers here. So flipper length in millimeters. And then the other one's going to be species. To indicate that the two interact with one another, we're going to use a star. So times species. If you've seen my vid on par parallel slopes models where the two variables do not interact, um, you'll remember that there was a plus in here. I'll throw a link to that vid up top. If you haven't seen that yet, I do recommend that you watch that one as well. Finally, here we have to make sure that R knows where to look for these variables. So data equals penguins, small. As usual, we can get uh, a glance at this with summary. So let's do summary of model and we get a whole bunch of information out. In particular, notice that under coefficients, we now have four coefficient estimates together with the standard errors, T values, and P values. So the main thing we really need to do is understand what this is telling us. So let's leave R for a minute and just get into the, um, the theory and practice of this linear model just a little bit here. We're in a situation where we have these two explanatory variables. The first quantitative, let's call that x1, and the second categorical, call that x2, with two levels. So in this case, x1 is flipper length and x2 is species. x2 is going to be equal to 0 for chin strap and 1 for gen 2. It's a dummy variable with dummy encoding. R is picking 0 for chin strap just alphabetically. It doesn't really ultimately matter theoretically which one is 0 and which one is 1. To, a model, to have a model with interaction between these two explainers, we're going to use this form. The response variable is going to be explained by or modeled by B0 plus B1x1 plus B2x2 plus B3x1, X2, where B0, B1, B2, and B3 are the coefficients to be determined, presumably by R. 
The difference between this and the parallel slopes model is just that last term, the x1 times x2, the so-called interaction term. Now, this might not seem logical given the name linear model, but of course the word linear here refers to linearity in the coefficients, the b0, b1, b2, b3. Those aren't being multiplied by one another. We don't have squares or cubes or anything like that. This is actually part of the power of linear regression is that we can have powers and products and even more complicated functions of our explanatory variables. Okay, let's try and understand what this model is really saying though by taking it apart just a little bit. Since x2 only takes on two values, 0 and 1, we can write this as a case-defined function. In particular, when x2 is equal to 0, so that happens for the chinstrap penguins, We've got the model b0 plus b1x1, and when x2 is equal to 1 for the gen2 penguins, we get b0 plus b2 plus b1 plus b3 times x1. So really what's going on here is that b0 and b1 are the intercept and slope for the chin straps, and b2 and b3 are the differences in the intercepts and slopes for the gen2 penguins versus the chin strap penguins. By the way, that category for which x2 is equal to 0 is called the reference level. So in this case, the reference level corresponds to the chin strap penguins. Let's take another look at that r output now that we have uh, a little bit more knowledge about what this model is actually doing. So we have these four coefficients estimates here, and now we know exactly what those mean. Those are our b0, b1, b2, and b3, respectively. So in the case of our chin strap penguins, the model is going to be negative 3037.196 plus 34.573 times x1, where again, x1 is flipper length. For the Gen 2 penguins, we are going to subtract 3750.085 from our intercept and add 20.049 to the slope. Notice also that R is giving us these p-values here, letting us know if there's um, to, if these coefficients are statistically significant versus a null hypothesis that they're equal to zero. In this case, we have statistical significance in each case, but notice that the, the p-values aren't that tiny in, um, in several of these cases, in particular for the intercept and slope for our... Um, for our Gen 2 penguins. So maybe in this case we could use a simpler model. Okay, let's go back to R and use this information to draw some regression lines by hand. So I'm gonna start just by taking this ggplot that we had before for the scatter plot, but now instead of doing the geom smooth, I'm going to put in the lines myself with geom ab line or geom ab line. So we're gonna specify the a and the b, the intercept and the slope. I'll do it within the aesthetic so um, intercept. So I'm going to be doing the, um, the chin straps first. So I want to do the intercept of negative 3037 first. And then the slope here of 34.573. I would like this to have the same color as the points. So I'm going to do a color aesthetic here where color is going to be equal to chin strap. And let me just plot that to make sure that I did it right before I do the second one. And that looks okay. So I'm going to copy and paste that. Make some changes now to do the, um, the Gen 2s. So for the Gen 2s now, I have to subtract off 3750 from my intercept. And I want to add on 20.049 to my slope. OK, great. So um, that is fairly close to what ggplot gave us. Of course, ggplot's um, the geom smooth here is a little bit better because it doesn't show the extrapolation that my plot shows. Right Here, my lines extend beyond the range of the data in each of the two groups, which is not what you want. I wrote some code to take care of that problem. I'm not going to go through it line by line, but if you'd like to pause the video, you can see how I constructed this graph, which is essentially what ggplot did on its 